my ex-husband had just split up and he dropped a $16,000 debt into my lap and left me with nothing, basically high and dry. <laughs> yeah. So I just needed something that was going to be affordable where I'd be able to take care of not only myself but my kids. So I needed something cheaper. When I applied, I went down, I was very pregnant with my youngest. I went down and I said, listen, I'm living in my friend's basement. I don't have a place to live. I need help now. Housing is a basic right. If you don't have housing, you have nothing. If you don't have housing, you don't have health care, you have nothing. Like, how can you live? How can you carry on your life without being able to afford your house? Affordable housing in Kingston is disastrous, as it is in a lot of cities in Ontario. The uh, federal and the provincial government has not given any care to affordable housing for a number of years. A few years ago, the uh, city of Kingston decided to try and address it locally. But the, there's no real political will in Kingston now to do affordable housing. I'm looking for affordable housing because I'm unable to work due to chronic pain that dates back to a work-related injury going back 15 years. It's basically the worst situation I could possibly be in. I mean, you know, when I was able to work, I worked hard, I enjoyed my job, I made good money, I didn't worry about things, and if I needed something, I'd save up and pay cash, you know, and it was a good life. Now it's constant stress over money and uh, I'm just, I'm dealing with depress depression and anxiety and, and panic issues and my life is hell. Affordable housing is one of the most fundamental components of good health on a personal basis. So people who are badly housed uh, have all sorts of health issues. It's not that they have different health problems than people who are housed, but they have them in a much heavier uh, burden, they, they're much, much heavier prevalence. So bad housing leads to poor health. It also leads to premature death. Tax cuts primarily benefit uh, people who are uh, paying the most taxes, which is wealthy individuals and profitable corporations. So they've gotten the equivalent over the years of billions of dollars in tax cuts. Meanwhile, all these programs, these necessary programs for poor people have been, uh, have been cut. And the inevitable result uh, is that we've got rising poverty, rising inequality, rising homelessness, huge housing crisis uh, that, that, that's growing. I sold my mom's baby grand piano and that's helped me live here. Once that money's gone, if I don't have a roommate, I have no hope. I'm basically, you know, gonna be, you know, shelter bound. I was forced back to work because I wasn't able to afford too much of anything. So I was forced back to work really early on when my daughter was really young. I worked for Levi's for six months, got let go because they weren't making money. I applied at 40 different places. Tim Hortons was the last one, and that was the one where I got hired. And it was just, you know, rubbing pennies together. So it was, it was hard, but at the same time, I'm thankful. The solution, in my mind, is the governments have to go back to what they did in the 70s when I was involved in, in uh, building uh, co-ops in Kingston, uh, 70s, 80s, where they, the government uh, funded or Actually, it was long-term loans. I mean, people think it was just giving the money away. It wasn't. It was long-term loans for the co-ops and, and social housing. How pathetic is it that it all comes down to money? The measure of a person's worth should not be how much money is in their bank account. And I just... I feel like I have no hope for any kind of future because I don't have money and I'm not able to, to go out and get it.